Can you use Tadalafil or Sildenafil just for fun? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about can you use these medications to have more fun in the bedroom and is it safe? Now, these medications are designed to treat erectile dysfunction. And if you're new here, I often tout the benefits of taking daily Tadalafil for a variety of issues, including erectile dysfunction. But what if you're taking a larger dose of these medications and you don't have ED? This has actually become very popular, and this is why today I'm going to answer the question, is that really safe? So first off, let's just talk about how these actually work. Phosphodiesterate 5 inhibitors, or PDE5. And PDE5 is an enzyme that's found in the smooth muscle of the cells of the penis. And so when this is active, it essentially breaks down an important compound called CGMP. And this is responsible for relaxing the smooth muscle cells so that blood can flow into the penis, creating an erection. And so when PDE5 is around, it breaks down that CGMP, meaning that the muscles can no longer be relaxed, so they contract and the blood leaves the penis, meaning the erection goes away. And so these medications, PDE5 inhibitors like sildenafil, tadalafil, vardenafil, and avanafil, they all work by blocking the PDE5 enzyme. And this then prevents that breakdown of CGMP, allowing it to accumulate and leading to increased blood flow and improved erectile function. Sounds great, and in fact, it really is. For men who have erectile dysfunction, this medication is a game changer. Now, what about if you're normal and healthy and you use it? What happens? Happens and how common is it? So in 2021, they published a review looking at 22 studies that investigated the recreational use of PDE5 inhibitors in a variety of different populations. And clearly, this has been an issue for many, many years because the first study that came out about this was in the year 2000, and that's only two years after sildenafil was actually introduced to the market. So these studies, which included a total of 25 thousand men from different countries reported using recreational medications for erectile dysfunction even when they didn't have erectile dysfunction anywhere from 4 to 66 percent of the time. So recreational use was more common in fact in men who were HIV positive who used other illicit drugs or engaged in unprotected sex. And the reasons they reported in these studies for using these medications were pretty expected. They wanted to have harder, longer lasting erections. They wanted to increase their sexual performance and frequency, meaning they wanted to have more frequent sex and be able to delay ejaculation and because of curiosity. And many of them also tended to combine these medications with alcohol, cannabis, or other recreational drugs. And most of them obtained the medications not from their doctor, but from friends without a prescription or through online sources. Now again, is this dangerous? Now, if you guys know anything about this channel, you know I've made several videos about PDE5 inhibitors, and I maintain that these are very, very safe and effective medications for erectile dysfunction, and they work very, very well to help men get erections and allow them to have sex. And they are generally very well tolerated with few side effects. But what happens when you are a normal human being who doesn't have ED and you're taking them recreationally? So a few issues can come up and this sometimes could potentially be dangerous. Now there's been a few case studies in the literature about crazy things that have happened, but for the most part, the major issues are one, if you try to combine them with other maybe illicit substances. Sometimes you'll find that men will take them with substances like cannabis, opioids, or even something called chemsex drugs. And this can then sometimes result in an exaggerated physiologic response. So let's start with cannabis. Cannabis actually can inhibit the metabolism of these medications, meaning that they would last longer and get metabolized slower than if you weren't taking cannabis. And this can ultimately result in higher exposure than what is intended by the dose you're taking. And what I say is when you're taking doses that are appropriate for you, the risk of having any major unintended consequence or side effect that is irreversible is very, very low. But when you start taking higher and higher doses, that's where we really don't know if this is going to be dangerous or lead to something called a priapism or an erection lasting longer than four hours. Now, a lot of guys will joke, oh, that's great. I can't, would love to have an erection lasting longer than four hours. 
But in reality, after four hours, there's no blood moving in and out of the penis. And so you're actually losing oxygen to the tissues and that can cause damage, which is why this is an emergency and you need to go to the hospital. Now, next up, remember I mentioned chemsex. So chemsex drugs are essentially when you're taking PDE5 inhibitors and other club drugs all at the same time, GHB, mephedrone, and they're all meant to enhance sexual function. And generally people on these drugs will have sex for long periods of time because they're altered and, and they're using these medications to enhance their ability to get an erection. And so what then can happen is you can have trauma from having prolonged periods of sex. If you're having anal sex, you can have rectal trauma. If you're having penile penetrative sex, you can get penile lacerations. Your partner can get vaginal lacerations. It is certainly not um, normal because of the time and duration you're spending doing something that involves quite a bit of friction. And so, of course, nobody wants to end up in the ER after taking a bunch of illicit drugs because they've now injured their genitalia. And of course, when you're altered, you're not going to make the best decisions. So you may put yourself at higher risk of sexually transmitted infections, um, especially if you're having unprotected sex and you're not using a condom, again, because you're altered. Now, this is with or without PDE5 inhibitors, but sometimes certain drugs can make it more difficult for you to get an erection, and the PDE5 inhibitors may then make it easier for you to get an erection, and so now you're having more sex than you would have when you're altered, making it a little bit higher risk. And actually, in some of these studies, they found that using recreational PDE5 inhibitors was linked with having higher rates of unprotected sex and higher rates of sexually transmitted infections. So while, again, these are not huge, huge studies and they're certainly not representative of the entire population, this is definitely a concern. Next up, visual disturbances. PDE5 inhibitors can also affect and inhibit the enzyme PDE6, which is found in the retina, which causes transient, meaning temporary, visual disturbances. Unfortunately, no study has shown that there has been actually permanent toxic effects to the chorioretinal tissue or the photoreceptors as long as you're taking a therapeutic dose and you're not going above that. Again, this is where we're concerned. If you take too much, can you have unintended consequences? Now, there's also been rare cases of what we call non-arteritic ischemic optic neuropathy, and that can be permanent with PDE5 inhibitor use. Again, more likely when you're taking higher doses. And lastly, heart problems. Can you get heart problems from taking these medications? So the biggest contraindication with these medications is taking anything with nitrates in it. So sometimes your doctor will prescribe nitroglycerin to put under your tongue for chest pain. And if you take that and these medications at the same time, you can have severe hypotension, meaning severe low blood pressure, which can even be life-threatening. And so when you're taking it without a doctor's prescription, you don't have anyone reviewing your medications to make sure that it's safe for you to take. Fortunately, this is not common, but if you're taking both those medications together or something like a nitrate that might be you know, in some sort of recreational drug, you can have really severe consequences. Now, in the literature, there are some case reports of a variety of other things that have happened to one or two people here or there. So hard to say if those are true side effects of taking PDE5 inhibitors. So generally speaking, I would say that, you know, when you're taking a dose that is appropriate for you and you're not overdosing on the medication, it's generally very safe. But I think it's really important to realize that this is not necessarily going to give you all the things you're looking for. It may not delay ejaculation. It might not let you have multiple rounds of sex. And it may interact with some of the things you're taking, especially if you're altered. So I think generally speaking, if you're using it for getting a stronger, firmer erection, it will likely do that. But at some point, your erection is already working as good as it's going to work if you're naturally very healthy. And so taking a medication may not give you the desired result. And so I would absolutely talk to your doctor if you are struggling with issues with sexual function. A lot of people will take them recreationally, but it's because they've actually had an issue where maybe they had difficulty getting an erection or there might be underlying issues with them getting erections. And they just want to have the confidence that they can get an erection in a high stakes situation or with a new partner. And so very reasonable to talk to your doctor about this. Now, there is a theory, right, that if you take these every time you have sex, you can get a psychological dependence on them. Like you might start thinking, oh, I always need this medication to help me get an erection. Now, I tend to think that sometimes once you've had a few good erections, you can then try and go back and have normal erections on your own because it helps you rebuild your confidence. A lot of issues with erections do have a psychogenic component to it. Do I think it's harmful to take it if you're having issues? Absolutely not. Do I think it's harmful to take a low dose? 
dose every single day? I don't think so. But I do think if you're taking really high doses or you're taking it when you're not completely uh, present, meaning you're altered due to other drugs, there can be really serious consequences. So I hope that answered your question about is it okay to use these medications for fun? If you guys are enjoying this content, sign up for my newsletter. Each and every week you get an email from me which reviews an article or interesting research tidbit that I haven't shared on my YouTube channel. We also answer one email newsletter member's question each and every week. I share a little bit about what's going on in my life and give you an update on a couple things that are going on on the channel and podcast so you can learn more about it and decide if you have time to watch those videos or listen to them on the go. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.